Hello, it's Thursday. Now, back in December, I did my 12 days of crochet where we did 12 miniature patterns together over 12 days. Now that was all well and good, but I knew that I wanted to reuse some of those patterns somehow. So last week I had a poll on YouTube asking if I could make any of those 12 patterns as a like full sized pattern, which one would you most want to see? And the vote didn't go as I expected. I actually thought that snake was going to win by a landslide, but it didn't. And there was a couple of other really strong contenders in the mix. So I decided that I was going to do the top two, which happened to be the snake and the shark. Now, the reason I've decided to do the shark this week first and schedule the snake for a little bit later is uh, basically I'm going to be using my mathematical doubling method and I want to double the shark, but I want to triple the snake, which means that the shark when doubled is going to be about 40 rows and the snake when tripled is going to be about 160. So it was about what kind of time we have for this week. And we have a shark amount of time, not a snake amount of time. I hope that makes sense. So. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to shark. For scale, this is the difference that just doubling makes. So this was meant to be a great white shark, so I guess that makes this one a meg. Okay, let's talk tools and materials. So for today's project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in one color, but you will also need a small amount of white to add teeth and eye details in at the end. You're also going to need a pair of 20 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, and some stuffing. So a written version of today's pattern will be made available to my patrons and will also be listed in my Etsy and I will leave links to both in the description down below for anyone who's interested. Now the Etsy listing will include the pattern for the mini as well as the maxi. I think I just named you. Hmm. Maxi the Megalodon. But the mini's pattern is also already available in the 12 days of crochet Australian animals bundle that's already listed. So first up we're going to work up the bulb of the nose. So in order to do that we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Then increase into each stitch around to bring us up to 12 in total. Over the next six rows, we're going to increase three times per row to get us up to 30 stitches around by the end of it. By evenly spacing those increases, we're going to end up with a nice balanced triangular shape to his nose. So there we are at the end of row eight. So that's his nose. And next up, we're going to be forming his mouth. Now, if you remember from the mini, his mouth kind of has this little dip in and then it flares back out into the rest of his body. Well, it works the same way on our maxi shark. So start by working 14 single crochet around. And then we're going to start working on the mouth. So we start by working a single crochet three together, which I do by inserting my hook through the front loops only of the next three stitches. You yarn over and pull up a loop through all three. And yarn over and pull through the last two loops on your hook to finish off the stitch. So there is that. We're then going to work just six single crochet across what will be the mouth. And then we're going to work another single crochet three together. Then there's just four single crochet left to finish the round. So you should have 26 stitches left in your round. So in row 10, we're going to start by working 15 single crochet back to our mouth. And the 15th single crochet should fall into the three single crochet together from the previous round. We're then going to work two single crochet three togethers. So just the same way we did in the last row, there is one. And and then five single crochet to finish the row. So not looking very sharky yet, but we are on our way. So now in rows 11 and 12, we're going to be flaring back out into the body. So once again, you start with 15 single crochet around to where the mouth is.
and then we are going to work three single crochet all into the same stitch so one two three and then we're going to do that again in the next stitch so one two three and then I bet you can guess but five single crochet to finish the round so row 12 is then 14 single crochet around to where the mouth is then three single crochet into the same stitch eight single crochet across the middle of the mouth and then three single crochet into the same stitch again and finishing with two single crochet to get us back to where we started now that last row might have felt counterintuitive to anybody trying to like follow along with the logic of the stitches but all that's doing is seeking to counteract the twist that is going to happen as we move on with the shark that was honestly the biggest challenge in translating from our mini shark to our maxi shark in that on a smaller one when you're working in a spiral it's less obvious and so you could just place things literally in a logical progression behind where they go on the larger one we had to I had to work to counteract a lot more drift as the fins tried to spiral around where they were supposed to be. So anything counterintuitive that happens here is likely just counteracting that inevitable spin. And for anyone else who, who, who doesn't pay attention to that sort of thing, there we go. There we are at the end of row 12. You should have 30 stitches in your row. So we are now just going to work two rows to finish off kind of what, what counts as like the head portion of the shark and then we'll be starting to build up the fins. So you can go ahead and work up rows 13 and 14 now. There we go. So now we are at the back of the head. We're not going to pop the eyes in just yet, but that is what your piece should look like. Now I don't know how many of you made the mini shark but anyone who did is going to be a little bit more prepared for what this is going to look like. So for the next section we are going to be building up her fins. This looks like we are making a corn chip until suddenly it just magically looks like a shark. Okay trusting the process. So heading into row 15 we're going to lay our three fin positions. So we're going to start with seven single crochet which should take us up to the top of the head. that top of the head we are then going to work three single crochet all into the same stitch so that three single crochet marks where the top fin is going to be on our finished shark we're then going to work 11 single crochet down the side which should bring you roughly even with like one side of the jaw and we're going to work three single crochet into the next stitch so those three single crochet represent one of his side fins, which might be caudal fins, if I remember correctly. Someone did tell me that back in December. Uh, and then we're going to work 12 single crochet along the belly. And then three single crochet all into the same stitch. So that marks the other side fin. You will then just have three single crochet to get back to your starting point. So you'll see he's a happy little triangle and at this point you should be able to see right away if your fins are going to be developing in the right spots. You should have one at the top of the head and one on either side of the jaw. If yours isn't lined up like this, a little bit twisted is okay but a lot twisted is going to give you a very drunken shark. So 
go back and count your previous rows and just make sure that your stitch count is coming up correctly or leave me a comment and I'll try and help. So we're now just going to go ahead and work rows 16, 17, 18 and 19 to grow our fins. So from here our rows are going to get really really big and in fact we're going to grow up to 72 stitches around which is huge but we don't stay there for very long I promise. So getting up to 72 stitches around and then working just one row at that level and then we'll be shrinking it dramatically from here on out. So there is our great mystical triangle at the end of row 19. So now in row 20, we're actually going to work a little bit of a magic trick to get his two side fins to form. So first we need to expand his top fin a little bit more. So we start with three single crochet. And then an increase. And then nine single crochet. leading us up to the top of the fin. We're then going to work three single crochet all into the same stitch. Now this one here might look off center to you, but it's again, counteracting that spin of working in a spiral. We're then going to work nine single crochet down the side. And then an increase. And then another eight single crochet down towards the belly. And here comes the fun part where we very rapidly go from 72 stitches in our round down to 52. You ready? We're going to skip the next 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So it's the 13th stitch from our hook. We fold that up to be in line to be our next stitch and insert our hook through it. So I'm making sure that I'm working this stitch kind of behind where I folded so that the front folds together nice and flat. And I'm just going to work a single crochet in there. So there is our first fin and then we're going to work 11 more single crochet across the stomach. So that's 12 stitches in total between the fins and we're going to do it again. So skip the next 12 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So find your 13th stitch from your hook, fold it over and work a single crochet into the 13th stitch. We then have three single crochet to finish the row. Okay, so. Here we are at the end of row 20 and we should have formed his caudal fins. So they look a little silly right now, but once he's stuffed and you've sewn these little openings shut, you'll, they'll, he'll start being a lot more sharky, you know? So that's basically the same trick we're pulling at the top here with this big fin. So if you want some idea of what he's going to look like, you can kind of pinch that now and pick up some sharky vibes, you know? Dun -dun. Not quite. You're more of just a d at the moment. We need to work on your dun. So having skipped all of those stitches in that row, we should be down to 52 stitches in our round. 
So for rows 21, 22 and 23, you're going to work 52 single crochet around in each for a combined total of 156 stitches. So there we are at the end of row 23. So row 24 is when we finally finish off that dorsal fin. So that is six stitches up towards the fin. Like so. And then we're going to be skipping 22 stitches. So. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So in the 23rd stitch from our hook, we're going to work our single crochet. Then we're going to just pause for a second, flatten out that section, and make sure that it is approximately on top of the shark and not crawling down his head. I'm pretty happy with where mine is. It is a little wonked off to one side, but I just pushed it back into position. Thus is the joys of working in crochet. And then we have just 23 stitches around to finish off that row. Like so. So your round should be down to just 30 stitches now. See, I told you we weren't gonna stay at 72 for very long. So at this point we are going to stop and pop our eyes in. We waited this long in the project just because once all three fins are locked in it's a lot easier to see if you've put your eyes in crooked. <laughs> so I'm going to start just by stuffing the tip of his nose. Nom 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 nom. Ah, like so. And then I'm going to just take my eyes and I'm going to insert them into row 10. So counting backwards from our starting magic ring. 7, 8, 9 and 10. And I'm going to put them pretty close to the corners of the mouth. So you can see there, it's almost basically in the mouth and viewed from below, the other side, and then from on top. Now, looking at it from on top, you get a better idea of whether or not they are even. So move your eyes around until you're comfortable with their location. a bit better. So I've moved mine up one stitch from the from the very crack of the corner of the mouth. Once happy, snap your backs on. And then we're to stuff just a little bit more into the head, but leave the body fairly empty for now. Doesn't matter if there's a little bit of overflow. So you should now work the next five rows to build his body. So there we are at the end of row 29. That's the body all worked up. So we have just one final fin to make on Maxi here before we start working down to the tip of her tail. So we build that over rows 30, 31, and 32. So this row starts by working 20 single crochet around. And then a decrease single crochet and then three single crochet all into the same stitch. We then finish the row with a decrease. So at this point check to make sure that your three single crochet into the same stitch is roughly centered on your shark's belly. If it's off to one side you may notice on the final piece. And then row 31 is the exact same thing again. like so. So you should be able to see the little protuberance now. Then in row 32, we're going to finalize this little fin. We start with a decrease, then 16 single crochet around. Then another decrease. 
a single crochet. And then this is a little tricky only because I've had to split it across the end of a row. But basically we'll be skipping the next five stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. Meaning our next stitch will be worked in the sixth stitch from our hook. And that stitch is the first single crochet of row 33. Like so. So there is our last little fin before our tail. So you should go ahead now and work up the next eight rows, which will bring us to the narrowest point in our tail. And don't worry, we're not stuffing yet. So there we are at the end of row 40. We have just eight stitches left in our round and he is looking a little bit flat because we have not stuffed him yet. But that's not a problem because we have this very handy little stuffing hole on top of him that we will be using to stuff him once we've attached the tail properly. On our little guy, at this point, we literally just built up the fins and called it a day. So because this guy is bigger, this is one of the few parts of the pattern that didn't just scale naturally and it did undergo a little bit of a redesign. So first things first, we have to build up a little bit more of a tail. So we start by working two repeats of a single crochet, three single crochet into the same stitch. And then two single crochet. So there's our first one and we're gonna do that again. So at this point you can stop and check. You should have two points coming off the tail that we're building and one should point upwards and one should point downwards. Moving on to row 42, starts with two single crochet. Then three single crochet into the same stitch. Five single crochet up the side. Three single crochet into the same stitch. And then three single crochet back to our starting point. So that tail is really starting to form up nicely now. We have just one more row of these sort of tail supports to do. So we start with three single crochet. Then three single crochet into the same stitch. Seven single crochet up the side. Three single crochet into the same stitch. And then four single crochet back to the start of our round. So now we just need to build her taller, fancier fins. So we start with four single crochet towards the bottom of the tail. It should bring us to the bottom most stitch. Then all in that same stitch, we are going to work a double crochet. Then chain two, and you can pull those quite tightly and then another double crochet into that same stitch. Then we're going to work nine single crochet up the other side of the tail. <laughs> Which brings us to the topmost stitch. And all in that same stitch, we are going to work a single crochet, a double crochet, a treble crochet, which is yarn over twice for anyone who needs that reminder. Then we're going to chain two quite tightly again. Then still all in that same stitch, we have another treble, a double, and a single. And then we have just five single crochet back to the start of our round. Then we just want to slip stitch into the next stitch and finish off. So 
So to form the tail, you just fold those two sides together, like so. So there is the one and only piece we need to form our shark, but there is still a few little things that we need to do to make it a little more sharky and a little less like, you know? So first up, what we are going to do is seal his fins. So I'm going to be grabbing just a regular old darning needle. You could do this with a normal needle or with your hook even. And I'm going to thread it with some of my shark color. I'm going to be careful not to do this main one until after we've stuffed, okay? We're going to do the two caudal fins, the little underbelly fin, and the tail only at this point. So what I'm going to do is attach my yarn at the base of the fin, like a little knot, or a locking stitch, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to stitch up the edge of this fin by picking up the front loop on one side of the fin and then the front loop from the other side of the fin. Now, I've experimented with a couple of different ways to sew these together. There does not seem to be a wrong way to do it. Just make sure that you pick up every stitch. As long as you do that, it should come out looking fine. Then when you reach the end, just thread your needle back through the tip of the fin and out through the base again. Just so that any yarn tails you have to deal with, you can deal with them on the body. If you want, you can technically sew along the base of the fin as well, just to seal it shut. I have not found that necessary for either my large one or my small one, but I also stuff very carefully. So if you know you're a little bit more aggressive with your stuffing, sewing along the base of the fin is also an option for you. So I'm just going to do the same thing to the other three fins now. Then just make sure all of your ends are tucked away. Okay, so now we're going to use our, I feel like calling it a stuffing hole is just not nice, <laughs> but we're going to use the opening at the back of our shark and we are going to use it to stuff. So grab your stuffing, tear it into cotton ball sized little puffs, and you are going to need quite a bit of stuffing to fill him up. That's enough to get me started. Then we're going to start with the tail. And I'm just going to tuck stuffing down through the opening and push it down into the tip of the tail. Keeping in mind that we don't actually want to stuff the fins that much. There's a little bit of room in there, but we really want that to sit flat. And I want you to keep adding stuffing until this whole tail section up to where the opening starts is full. Like so. So with the head full and the tail full, all we really need to do is fill up this main body section. So I want you to do that now, but I want you to be very careful not to push any stuffing into these fins and not to stuff past where the back ends. We do not want any stuffing coming up into this main top fin itself. and you can make your shark as fat as you like. So there we go. I have filled mine up there. You can see there to the base of the opening, but not into the fin itself. So now all we have to do is fold the two edges of our top fin together and sew along this edge the same way we did the side fins. So I'm just going to do that now. like so and once again you could choose to sew along the base of each of the fins at this point if you would like to but I have not found that necessary up to this point. If this is going to be a toy for someone who's going to squidgy it a lot 
I would potentially encourage you to do that, just to lock the stuffing into the main torpedo of the body. So, last but not least, we have a few extra credit details to add. We have technically a finished shark at this point. You get a B, go on your way. Anybody who wants the extra credit, follow me. So, we're going to add some whites to his eyes. And I have swapped to a pointy needle for this, just because it's a little easier. like so. I'm then going to use a little bit more of my white to stitch a zigzag on into the indentation of the mouth. Just like that, nothing fancy. I'm then going to use a little black and I'm going to stitch on a couple of gills. So I'm just going to use the lines of the rows to help me line those up. And there is your finished shark. So I was genuinely surprised at how well the fins came out. I wasn't sure if that structural technique was going to end up working. Um, and we only had to adjust the pattern very slightly to get it to, to size up, which I honestly think is good news for anybody who wants sized up versions of any of the other minis, because it means that I am way more likely to do it again in future. <laughs> okay, bye!